Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. All right, guys, so it looks like we have calmed down a little bit. The crypto market did take a big hit yesterday. Bitcoin did come down from that $40,000 price level all the way down. You can see here it wicked down to about 41,400. And as of the time of this recording, we are making our way up a little bit, 43,200 for BTC. So did this market correction, did this market crash take you guys by surprise? If you've been watching me for the last several weeks, uh, I mean, I knew it was in the cards at some point. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. I mean, we have, uh, you know, come up quite a bit on the Bitcoin trend since mid-September and we were due for a correction. And uh, I mean, even to be quite honest with you, this correction still hasn't played out, I don't think, to its max. Here it is on the daily. Uh, I mean, you can't really glean too much from the daily chart, but if I uh, put it back on the hourly, you guys can see this bullish uh, pennant pattern that is forming here. So that inverted pennant pattern, which means that the buying strength isn't nearly as strong as the sell pressure. So, uh, you know, chances are we are going to move back down. Taking a look at the crypto market at a glance, we can see the market cap is back down to 1.65 trillion. Uh, greed guys over here, 67. So, we're moving back into the 60s and uh, most coins, as you guys can see, are in the red by a significant amount. Now, altcoins have been hit the hardest. I mean, uh, although Bitcoin did tumble, coins like XRP did wick down, guys, right down here as low as about 50 cents per coin, 50 and a half cents. Uh, but you guys can see that pattern uh, did move back up along with Bitcoin forming that same inverted pennant pattern. So coins like XRP moving alongside Bitcoin. I'm sure the same is uh, true with Ethereum. Yep, there it is. I haven't looked up these coins, but, uh, you know, because of the bigger market structure, let's just take a look at BNB. We're probably going to see, I don't know, BNB, uh, not the same kind of pattern. But I mean, for many coins, we're probably going to see that same uh, pattern there, that huge dip down, in some cases, the wick, and then forming that uh, inverted pennant pattern structure. This is uh, ADA here on the hourly. Let's take a look at one more TRX USD. Uh, and no, that, that one actually doesn't look the same. What about Solana? Solana USD, there we go. There's another one there, Solana USD, where we see that inverted uh, chart pattern there for Solana. So guys, most of these coins are just kind of rhyming Bitcoin right now. Uh, you know, the bigger narrative is getting nasty. Morgan Stanley chair says Bitcoin is not a core investment. This coming from XRP Crypto Wolf. Basically, here's what Morgan Stanley is saying. James Gorman, the executive chairman of Morgan Stanley, offered a cautious view on Bitcoin in a recent interview. Boy, isn't that convenient. One of the foremost figures in global finance opined that the flagship cryptocurrency cannot serve as a core investment. So guys, now we're seeing the narrative turn. Of course, this is what they want us to see. And uh, it is obviously being reflected in the retail plebe investment group, 67. So uh, that is dying down. Of course, this is exactly what they want, though. Gorman articulated his skepticism about Bitcoin's role in investment portfolios, stressing its speculative nature. I've really never understood the value of Bitcoin as a form of stored value, he said. Here it begins. I really am hoping that we are going to see a bigger downturn uh, because I'm still looking to get into some positions uh, for my Patreon subscribers. I did just post an update yesterday. You can find that at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month. If you guys want to join my Patreon, I'm basically opening up my portfolio, letting you guys know what I'm trading, my trading decisions, going to let you guys know basically within minutes of uh, my trading decisions. So, I mean, for those of you guys who are interested in what I'm trading, looking to see when the dip has gone far enough down for me to make that decision to buy into some more coins if it gets that far, patreon.com slash working money channel. Remember too, we were talking yesterday about Michael Saylor selling $216 million worth of micro strategy shares to invest in Bitcoin. This one courtesy of Ashley Prosper. This market dip is simply to allow the big players to get in at a lower price. Basically exactly what I've been saying. By the way, this is the total market cap on the one hour. I never finished this. One, market cap on the one hour. You can see that uh, big move down. Okay. Uh, throw that back on the hour. What was I talking about here? I guess just the fact that, uh, you know, the market cap has lost. Uh, well, did wick down 10%, almost 11%, but then uh, rebounded here down about 5% since yesterday. That wasn't what I was going to talk about, but uh, maybe it'll come to me. Back to Ashley though here, guys. Basically, this is a market push so that institutions can get in at a better price before the ETF goes live. They sell to push the market lower and then you sell out of FUD, which pushes the market even lower and they buy to push the market up and then you buy for FOMO, which pushes the market even higher, giving them maximum profit. So Guys, they are using us as exit liquidity. Don't fall into this uh, into this narrative here. Okay, we want to be on the right side of the trade. We want to be on the same side 
of the trade as the institutional investors and trade against the retail investor. You do not want to be the FOMO. You do not want to go chasing green candlesticks. You do not want to sell into red candlesticks. This is classic trading. Of course, none of this is financial advice. I'm just telling you guys what I'm doing here. Finance a lot. Also mentioning this, crypto mining stocks tanked yesterday despite crypto rising, which makes it obvious the hedge funds and banks knew this news would come out 24 hours later. So that's the other thing that he's noticed here. That's how corrupt the system is. He retweeted out his uh, tweet from yesterday. And guys, it was all due to a matrix port report. Latest report claims that the SEC will reject the Bitcoin ETF. So this wasn't even real news. This was just a report that came out. This is showing you guys, uh, I think this is what I was going to say. This is basically showing you guys how fragile this market actually is. Hey, Greg Crypto here also commenting, the wealth has disappeared into the deep pockets of the big players. Instead of using leverage, opt for a patient strategy. So guys, all these leverage traders got wiped out. Over $1 billion of Bitcoin futures wiped out in one candle. Thanks to Matrixport, this uh, courtesy of Will Clement here. So here's what happened. Bitcoin ETF denial report did not cause an 8% BTC price crash. Uh, there was no actual denial, guys, of any uh, Bitcoin ETFs. But there was a report that claimed that the SEC will reject the spot Bitcoin ETF. All right, so this is the point I'm trying to get to. The market is very fragile. And, you know, the news being that very delicate push that could send the market over the edge, which it did do yesterday. So what happened in this report? The report claims that there was no reason to approve the Bitcoin ETF. That's basically all it said here. The move while washing out uh, both longs and open interests accompanied a report from crypto financial services platform Matrixport, which led with an assertion that the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission will reject the spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, and here's a quote from a political perspective. There is no reason to approve a Bitcoin spot ETF that would legitimize Bitcoin as an alternative store of value. Who was commenting on this? None other than Scott Melker here. And I have his tweet up here, guys. Uh, this is the reason, reason in quotes for the dump. I put quotes uh, because this is really just a leverage flush. Regardless, this is just an opinion with zero new information that flies in the face of everything shared by experts. So why are you so skittish? Guys, if anything, it just is another opportunity to get into the market. Uh, a good opportunity here. Matrix on target has been bullish against consensus expectations in 2023 and predicted early in the year that Bitcoin would reach $45,000 by Christmas. We even expected that uh, all the SEC requirements for the Bitcoin spot ETF were fulfilled. Bitcoin could rally towards $50 or if those requirements were fulfilled, Bitcoin could rally to $50,000 by the end of January 2024. Well, we have seen frequent meetings uh, between the ETF applicants and staff from the SEC, which resulted in the applicants refiling their applications. We believe all applications fall short of a critical requirement that must be met before the SEC approves. So the overall sentiment here uh, is negative. They are saying there is no reason for the SEC to be approving uh, you know, right now. And this is basically what uh, flushed the crypto markets, uh, what got greed down to 67, why we're seeing altcoins down. And uh, you know, some are even complaining XRP is down more than Bitcoin. We're going to talk about that in a second. James Van Stratton here also mentioning this. This is the guy who founded Matrixport, a supporter of Bitcoin Cash. Note this, guys. So the Matrixport uh, report that we just read here, Jihan Wu is a Chinese billionaire cryptocurrency entrepreneur. Together with uh, this guy, he co-founded Bitmain, uh, but also he is a leading supporter of Bitcoin Cash, a hard fork of Bitcoin created in 2017. So maybe he has a vested interest in this. But back to the XRP question, why did XRP crash the hardest when it didn't even go up like the rest of the market in the first place? Courtesy of XRP Crypto Wolf here, uh, Eggrad Crypto here, uh, also noticing that beautiful wick that came down for XRP. Now, guys, let's talk about XRP for a minute. I know there's a lot of haters right now because XRP did not uh, perform as well in this, um, well, mini bull run as I had expected. I mean, we have been seeing XRP crashing with the rest of cryptocurrencies, which is, uh, you know, par for the course. But, uh, you know, had we seen that same appreciation that we've seen for some other coins, like, let's say, Solana, for example. Remember Solana at the beginning of the year, and I'm going to take these numbers from the beginning of the year, basically January the 1st. Let's just take this bottom because that was uh, pretty much the end of 2022. All the way to the top, Solana has already gone up 1,467%. Meanwhile, we compare that to XRP and we take XRP from the bottom, which was in and around, where was it? In and around here somewhere, that bottom uh, candlestick. And it did go up. I mean, if we were to look at this high here, it did go up about 216%. 
uh, but more recently about 134% before coming back down. Now, every coin, guys, is going to do its own thing. Right now, XRP is still up 93% since the beginning of this year. But people still like to hate. Let's just take a look at Ethereum here for a second. Since the beginning of the year, Ethereum is up about 87%. So commensurate to XRP, roughly, XRP is actually up a little bit more as of the time of this recording. So it's going to really just depend. Egg Crypto here bringing this XRP short-term analysis. Okay, in August, XRP flirted with the lowest boundary of the channel, facing a significant $1 billion liquidation across crypto. Now, after five months, it's revisiting the zone with another aggressive $1 billion liquidation. See, surprisingly, the XRP bulls have staunchly defended this channel buying the dip uh, as if there's no stopping them, the bulls managed to triumph over the Val hell line, avoiding a daily candlestick close below it. A slight retest around 55 cents seems pretty standard. Personally, I'm increasingly confident that we're gearing up for a significant upswing very, very soon. Um, so, you know, this trend to the upside, this is just grinding up slowly. If you guys didn't catch the video I did, I've talked about this formation that we've seen on the charts many different times in XRP's history. It's that Nike swoosh formation that we saw here. We also saw it right in around here, uh, basically right at the beginning of the bull run 2020. And then again, we saw mini one right in around here, uh, right after that initial pump in 2017, which brought XRP up to all time high. So that Nike swoosh pattern guys playing out and the longer the base, the higher in space. Now, I wish I could have played you guys this clip. I had it all set up, but I didn't realize it did have uh, copyrighted music behind it. So I'm not going to play it. But basically, the longer the base, the higher in space. This is what the CNBC pundit was saying back then about XRP. And I will link that in the description if you guys want to watch it, guys. This base is stretching out quite long. The longest Nike swoosh pattern we have seen to date. So are we going to see this thing pop? In terms of this action that Egg Red Crypto has uh, noticed here, we have uh, seen this channel, even with the Valhalla level here, and we did wick down. We actually are staying within this channel here. Also note this, guys, from Mr. Hubert, XRP is now at a three-year low against Bitcoin and is about where it dropped when the SEC filed the lawsuit claiming it was a security. So XRP against Bitcoin. This is the other chart uh, we should probably uh, be paying attention to. It generally does happen that uh, XRP does find support here. And guys, check that out. If I zoom in here, you guys can see this is the XRP to Bitcoin chart on the daily. We are hugging that level right there, hugging it. We did wick down, but then came back up and then now are finding support right in around here. After XRP had hit this level in the past, we had seen it shoot up against the Bitcoin price. So could we expect something big for XRP uh, to pop, to kind of move away from Bitcoin, gaining price momentum and leaving the rest of the crypto market behind? Another good uh, observation here, wanted to thank Mr. Hubert, wanted to thank Mr. Mann. Originally for that, of course, Egg Red Crypto and everybody else who participated here. XRP Drops also mentioning this. Raul Pyle did go on uh, Scott Melker's podcast yesterday. And guys, nothing has changed. Listen to this. My Another mantra that I have when you're in the middle of a bull market that has the macro behind it is it's all fucking noise. It's just noise. And so, you know, has the main thesis changed? Is the world becoming less digital or more digital every day? More. Are investors who aren't exposed to it getting more interested in it? Yes. Is their capital flow coming in? Yes. Is the business cycle supportive? Are liquidity conditions supportive? Yes. In which everything else is noise. So it doesn't change anything. It actually gives it a higher probability of rising. And it gives it a higher probability of rising because you flushed out the leverage. So the leverage has been flushed out. Exactly what Egg Crypto was saying here. The wealth has disappeared into the deep pockets of the big players. Instead of using leverage, opt for patience and strategy. That is because the leverage has been wiped out. And so the ETF rejection FUD crash. Another mantra that I have when you're in the middle of a bull market is that look at the macro behind it, guys. This is all just noise as per Raul Pal. Nothing is becoming less digital. Everything's becoming more digital. Uh, investors who aren't exposed to it getting more interested in it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, is capital flowing in? Yes. Is the business cycle supported? Yes. Are liquidity conditions supported? Absolutely. Everything else is just noise. So again, guys, you know, a great opportunity to get into some good cryptocurrency, some good quality cryptos. XRP still trading at a steal of a deal. 
Not to mention that quadrillions of dollars, guys, is going to move into crypto derivatives. Okay, so take a look at this with regards to the derivatives crypto market specifically. ISO 2022 pointing us in this direction. Guys, they're setting it up already. They're already setting up fractionalized cryptocurrency purchases through derivatives. My fund may invest up to 15% of its total assets to indirectly gain exposure to Bitcoin through shares of Grayscale, Bitcoin Trust, Pro Shares, uh, Bitcoin Strategy, ETF, and Bitcoin Futures Contract. I predict $1 quadrillion of spot Bitcoin and crypto derivatives stacked up by the year 2030. And the supporting evidence here, guys, this was just filed January the 2nd, so a couple of days ago now. Here it is saying that uh, to gain exposure, this is exactly what this guy was saying, Grayscale, Bitcoin Trust, Pro Shares. Uh, Bitcoin strategy ETF and Bitcoin futures contract. The fund does not make direct investments in Bitcoin for purposes of this 15% limit. These investments are measured at market value and futures at notional value, respectively. So this is going to be where money is flowing in. Fred Krueger also mentioning this. I had lunch with an old ex Solomon, ex UBS friend of mine who will call Jean Francois. He hasn't bought Bitcoin yet because he's not the kind of guy who will store his wealth on a hard wallet. Okay, you got to think this is traditional investors, big institutional money. He's also leery of MSTR, which he views as second tier software company, which just happens to own a lot of Bitcoin. He will almost certainly, though, buy the BlackRock ETF when it comes out. There's no sense in waiting two years if this is the beginning. You wanted to buy Tesla in 2020, not today. So there are a lot of people like Jean-Francois, and their advice is taken by a lot of other people who trust Jean-Francois. So traditional finance is all about word of mouth and relationships. Do not second guess it for a second. Big money is coming in. And, uh, you know, later on in this podcast, Scott Melker and Raul Pal had a bit of a laugh over how much money is going to be coming into the crypto market. When the time is right, listen to this, courtesy of Sento Sumo Saba on Twitter. I think people underestimate just how degenerate these TradFi guys are. And once they come in through the Bitcoin ETF, and once they get a taste for this market, wait until they find out about meme coins and altcoins and NFTs. And that real liquidity comes in there. So I think that uh, we get the inevitable trickle down of even institutional traders. I, I'm not saying that pension funds are buying punks, but I think that uh, there's going to be just an unexpected boom in capital. And that's going to flow through that same cycle that we talked about before. Everybody's been through that cycle. You have, I have, everybody. Is you come in on Bitcoin and then you walk into the candy store and it's like, holy shit, this is the best thing I've ever seen. And before you know it, you're doing ridiculous things you should never be doing and having a lot of fun doing it, even knowing that it's crazy. Boom goes the dynamite. You heard it here from a former traditional investor turned degenerate. I joke, I joke, guys. So think of it. This chart shows that crypto is still in its early stages of adoption. The chart shows crypto adoption is similar to that of the internet. Assuming the internet was officially born in 1983, it took 22 years for there to be 1 billion internet users. Bitcoin is officially 15 years old today. So 2030 seems like a significant year for crypto if adoption continues at a similar rate. Guys, we are still in the very early stages of this. Think about all the companies that hadn't even come out yet by 1997, 1998, if you guys were around at that time. So cryptocurrency, an emerging asset class, and this is why I'm only going to be trading a portion of my XRP this bull run for all my targets, for all my coins, the amount of money and quantity I have of these coins, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. I'm also going to be letting you guys know what I will be trading and when. But until next time, I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.